I like to welcome Dr. Neil McKinney from Victoria in British Columbia, Canada. He is a naturopathic doctor, very much experienced in cancer care. We know each other for, I don't know, about 10 or 12 years. We yes. have worked together and uh, I have learned a lot from you, Neil. And so I'm glad you're here on this video and uh, I'd like to introduce you to our viewers. Welcome to this video. Yeah. <laughs> I was able to but, speak to some uh, uh, people you know in Switzerland when I was there a few years ago and it was a, was a great pleasure and it's nice to be reintroduced <laughs> some of these people and, and others. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember well. <laughs> great. Um, why in the world did you study naturopathic medicine? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a kind of a long story, but uh, my my parents grew up very poor in Canada before there was public medicine, but every, you had to pay privately and, and a lot of poor people couldn't afford to go to doctors. So they really didn't have a culture of going to doctors for every little thing. And, you know, the old, the old uh, saw is, you know, for example, the farmer gets his hand caught in the combine, gets it all mangled up, well, wraps it soaks it in kerosene, wraps it in a rag and goes back to work. You know, this is how people were. They'd have their babies and go back to work. So <laughs> we didn't grow up with this culture of, you know, doctors are know everything and, you know, you should always do what the doctor tells you. Uh, we got some of the first penicillin shots, you know, as kids and we early vaccines and things that uh, as medicine advanced. Of course, we had respect for what medicine could do in emergencies, but we certainly weren't in that mindset of, MD, medical doctors know everything. So when I grew up, I went uh, to university to uh, with the idea of doing pre-med and becoming a, a doctor. But once I got accepted to medical school, I found that they were very, very conservative and had very negative views towards things like acupuncture and other things that interested me. So I actually put, decided not to go to regular medical school. I put my finger on the globe on Vancouver, British Columbia, my finger on the other side of the globe, and said, I hope to heck that, you know, it's not Antarctica because I don't want to go there, but I'm going to get as far away from these bigoted people as I can get and rethink what I want to do. And, it's, I, you know, the First Nations people here would call it a vision quest or you know, various cultures. You know, Jesus went 40 days in the wilderness sort of thing. So it used to be a thing that a young man would go out by himself and try and figure out what he wanted to do with his life. And so basically I did that. I went all the way overland, all the way to the southern tip of India meditated on the rock that Yogananda used to sit on in Kanya Kumarai and um, rethought what I want to do. And when I was there, I met some naturopaths and homeopathic doctors. Uh -huh. So I came back to Canada and said, well, that's what I want to do. I want to st study acupuncture and Chinese medicine, but I also want to study homeopathy and natural medicine. But that's the thing for me. Well, turned out there were these naturopathic doctors in British Columbia, licensed, regulated doctors. And I said, well, okay, that's what I'm going to do. So I took four years of training in, in naturopathic medicine on top of my five years of university. And I'd done a little bit of work in research and in microbiology. And then I also took three years in Chinese medicine down in the United States. And then I got licensed up here and I practiced for about 36 years and just retired this last year. Mm. So I always had an interest in alternative medicine, complementary medicine, not to the exclusion of allopathic medicine, but to, to try and reduce the harm and increase the benefit, and sometimes provide an alternative where regular medicine didn't have one. So I use nutrition and herbal medicine and homeopathy and Chinese medicine, herbology and acupuncture, and uh, neural therapy and um, many other therapies. But along the way, right around the time that I decided uh, to uh, go into medical school before I applied and went through all this um, dismay at how conservative they were. There was a fellow in Canada who had cancer and lost his leg. His name was Terry Fox. He's, he's there was a, yeah, we, we heard the story here too. Yeah. He's very, very famous. He's considered one of the most important Canadians who've ever lived. He was a really wonderful person. And he used to come down to my lab. I was working in cancer research, radiation and drug research between graduating from university and um, making the commitment to go to medical school. And uh, I was doing this cancer research. And he used to come down to my lab and he looked me in the eye one day and he said, I'm going to raise a whole bunch of money so smart people like you can figure out a cure for cancer. 
Well, not too long after that, he had to give up his run and he died of his cancer. The inflammation from the running about a marathon a day uh, caused his cancer to flare up and he died. So I feel that I kind of got deputized. I got, you know, he sort of touched me and said, you know, we need people like you to work and find a cure for cancer because he, he was just so disturbed at going into the children's hospitals and trying to encourage other children with cancer and seeing a lot of them still die, a lot of them still losing their legs. And really, he, he saw that there wasn't much progress in those several years that he was trying to recover and help others recover. So there was a lot of inertia in the system. You know, the old, we all know the old boys network that just spins the, the grants between them year after year and not really trying to invent anything new unless it's worth a billion dollars. Um, so he, he wanted to put some money into new places to find new ideas for cancer. So I kind of took up that torch mm -hmm. and uh, went into alternative medicine, but with a focus in cancer. Now, I will come back to cancer treatments uh, later. Let me ask about university in Canada. You are able to study naturopathic medicine in university because in Europe, that's not so. Here, you can only go to medical school and mm -hmm. naturopathic therapists, they are called. Yeah. They are not uh, educated in, in universities. So yeah. would that mean that uh, the training in, in Canada and US is better than in Europe? Well, I, I know that in German medical schools, for example, there is a they have to do a module in alternative medicine, write a small thesis and you know, do take some courses in um, alternative complementary medicine. But here how it's been set up is you do a Bachelor of Science degree at, at a university, but the, the, the schools in Canada are not university based. They are uh, private schools and they're four years of naturopathic medicine, you know, dissection, all the basic pre-med, biochemistry, f physiology. But then the therapeutics are uh, le much less emphasis on surgery and drugs and much more on alternative medicines. So in Canada, the two schools are private colleges, that, but uh, do have degree granting status. Now in the United States, a number of them, Bastyr University in particular, um, has become a university and the college I went to national college that was just a naturopathic medical school at that time uh, and had actually formed an association with the Chinese medicine school have now become full fledged universities and have programs in nutrition in psychology, you can become a, a physician's assistant to uh, all sorts of different streams of education and they are actually classed as now as full universities that are fully accredited. So it they are moving towards being university based, but they are basic um, all started in my era as private schools, mm -hmm. chartered okay. schools. And then later on in your career, you were a professor yourself in, in a, a naturopathic school. Yes, I helped, uh, I helped found the Boucher Institute of Naturopathic Medicine in uh, near Vancouver, British Columbia. And I, I wrote a lot of the curriculum and taught a number of the courses in the first few years and only recently have um, stopped teaching there. So it ran and it actually became the best school in terms of the graduates success in the board exams and people hiring our graduates for their clinics uh, the boucher institute became the top school mm -hmm. so i'm very proud of that but it was a lot of work yeah. and um, i'm yes. glad glad not to be what doing do, that just what now. do you think about students uh, here, here in europe i get the impression that naturopathic medicine is becoming more attractive to younger people yeah. what about canada well the schools are doing quite well in terms they have lots of uh, enrollment the, that's not been a problem they they are doing quite well turning out a lot of good graduates but um yeah it's a uh, it, there's ups and downs politically and financially for the schools and they I think that one of the things we've seen in the last 20 years is that the students are very skeptical about homeopathy and some of the uh, hydrotherapy and some of the really older types of naturopathic therapy. Pardon me. <coughs> so uh, it's actually hard to get them to to get the scope of education that we got. We had a big toolbox. We would study, you know, herbal medicine and and all these other medicines. But there's much more emphasis now on, and they seem to be much more keen on the intravenous therapies and the drug therapies. Um, they're, they're, 
they're really not as naturopathic as they used to be. Mm -hmm. So it can be frustrating trying to teach them and the constant skepticism. Uh, so uh, that's one trend that I don't like is that it seems to be that the focus is becoming a bit narrower uh, as time goes by. Yeah. Okay. What uh, was your the subject of your doctorate? Well, we don't we didn't do a thesis, uh, so it, this is quite different. I know that this is what is done in Europe, and for PhDs, of course, you have to write a thesis yeah. or even a master's degree. But no, we didn't write uh, research papers. We we had so many hours of clinic and so many hours of class, and uh, you know you had to write essays and whatnot. But it, there wasn't an was actual research thesis. In fact, the research arm of naturopathic medicine has been a big problem. And this is one of the things that Dr. Bastier, who founded Bastier University, which has become a full university with two campuses, um, is that he emphasized that we need to read a research paper every day and we need to find the research that supports what we do because clinically we know certain things work, but we need to prove them to and publish them. And so he created a, a real push. And this alienated a lot of the naturopaths in the um, United States who weren't naturopathic physicians, but more like the chiropractors that you have, you know, who, who know a little bit about nutrition and, and natural medicines, but uh, not really expert at diagnosis and kind of medical reasoning. So uh, yeah, it, there's just been a, a great push to, uh, to bring the, our, our profession up scientifically. And that's why I continue to write research papers. I'll read, you know, five, 600 papers on PubMed and I'll, I'll write a summary. I'll condense them and, and make a flow, a narrative that uh, makes them understandable and accessible to people who don't have time to read 600 papers. Mm -hmm. you know, so this is sort of thing I brought to it coming from a research background, um, medical research, radiation research um, is yeah, a great more emphasis on science without discarding uh, things that have yet to be studied, you know, or found to be profitable enough to study like hydrotherapy. Um, I still will use hydrotherapy for, you know, sore ears or sore throats and this sort of thing. But I'll also provide other things that have uh, yeah. hopefully a research so, foundation. What was your focus then in your office? On, on, uh, on which methods did you uh, experience the best successes? Well, I, I actually, towards the end of my career, was using less homeopathic medicine than I did in early days. But we, d I did a lot of injections of herbal homeopathic medicines um, into things like Tromiel. I don't know if you're aware of, but you know, injectable mistletoe, for example, for cancer. So I would inject around tumors, inject intravenously, um, inject subcutaneously, those sorts of things. So I also did a number of uh, injections into joints um, Synvisc and other preparations. Um, I didn't use cortisone, but we, we had natural medicines that we would use for these things, various immune products. So I did a lot of injections. Uh, I did a lot of acupuncture, but I prescribed a lot of nutritional, you know, um, interventions, herbal, uh, and, uh, some hydrotherapy. So a, a very eclectic mix, really. Mm -hmm. A lot of emphasis on nutrition. And nutraceuticals so and certainly over my my career the supplements that are available on the market like you have king nature supplements that you make they're very very high quality and uh, but there weren't very good products many years ago we have to compound a lot of our own in our dispensary mm. so we would have you know various uh, we'd make up creams and salves we'd make up um, oral preparations we'd make up rectal preparations suppositories you know we'd, we'd manufacture some of our own medicines mm -hmm. Okay, Neil, I thank you for now. We will continue and just start another video about your cancer experience. But thank you for all everything you told us. Thank you thank very you. much.